So how well do you understand basic math? Well, hopefully pretty well, because that's all that is uh, required to do this problem here. And of course, most people should be able to solve this because most people should have some basic math skills. Now, this problem is designed to uh, be solved without the aid of a calculator. Of course, we could plug all this in uh, into a calculator and a right answer will appear, but we wanna kinda see what you know about uh, basic math. And of course, this would be classified as like arithmetic. But let's go ahead and take a look at our problem here. Uh, what we have is five times parentheses 18 uh, minus eight divided by two cubed times two and parentheses. We want to simplify this down to one value. Okay, so if you could do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then of course, I'll walk through this uh, solution step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the actual problem. So as I indicated, uh, what we have to be thinking about here is the order of operations. And when we're thinking about the order of operations, we want to think about this acronym right here, P-E-M-D-A-S. This is also uh, kind of known as the acronym PEMDAS, right? Of course, I'll explain this here in a second. But in mathematics, we have various operations, right? We have subtraction. Well, let me go ahead and define a mathematical operator. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, and the such. These are things that we can do with numbers. These are mathematical operations, okay? Now, uh, depending on what order we take, we'll generate different values for this um, uh, problem, okay? So if we're like, hey, I want to do subtraction, then multiplication, eh, then I'll be able to do addition. So if you want to go in one particular order and somebody else goes in another order, you're going to end up with different answers at the end different values. Now, of course, only one of those values is correct. The correct answer is the one that was generated by using the correct order of operations, which is, uh, again, this is kind of our checklist here, and I'll explain this here in a second. So PEMDAS, this is what you want to remember, and there's a nice little phrase that goes along with this, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. This thing has been around for many, many, many years. Probably my great, great grandparents were saying this way back in the good old days when uh, you know all uh, you know, there was no computers. There was just paper and pencil, and that's kind of how it uh, was for many of us uh, that grew up. You know, uh, my generation. You know, went to school you know, like uh, elementary school in the 1970s and whatnot. You know, it wasn't really until some of the last few decades where we really started incorporating technology and getting away from uh, the basics. Okay, so not to digress. So what does this PEMDAS mean? Well, this is a checklist. We're going to go from left to right. Okay, left to right. And now let me go ahead and explain what each one of these uh, uh, letters mean in this acronym. Okay, so P stands for parentheses. We're going to go... Uh, Look for parentheses in the prom. If there's parentheses, we're gonna to go to those parentheses first. Of course, we have parentheses here, but uh, the PEMDAS acronym, uh, the P, can also uh, be these kind of brackets or these kind of other type of brackets like this, squiggly brackets. It really means grouping symbols, okay? And if you have multiple uh, parentheses in your prom, let's say you have parentheses here, brackets here, and then these other type of brackets here, you'd always start from the inside innermost parentheses first. Okay, so a lot to um, uh, practice when it comes to the order of operations. This is a fairly basic problem, but that's what the P stands for, parentheses. Okay, now what does the E stand for? Well, E stands for exponents, but you can kind of think of this as power. So if I have two to the third power, this three is what we call the exponent in this power. This two is called the base. The entire thing is a power. So when you look at this, you're like, oh, that's two to the third power. Well, this isn't a power. That's the exponent. That's what that E stands for. But effectively, uh, the E is where we're going to do powers. Now, you can see in this problem, uh, clearly we have parentheses and we have some power. So, uh, you know, uh, some of you are like, oh, yeah, I bet you we have to do this first. Well, you're probably thinking pretty well. 
Okay, now let's take a look at this uh, MDAMS. So uh, let me just tell you what these things stand for. MD, uh, this is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. Now, uh, you know, it's kind of logical to think, well, if you're going from left to right, and this is a checklist, we must always do multiplication. And then once all the multiplication is done, we'll move on to division if there's any, and addition and subtraction in this manner. But this is a very confused part of the order of operations. It actually doesn't work that way. Okay, I know it's a little confusing, so let me explain this to you now. All right, so when it comes to PEMDAS, these are actually two groups, multiplication and or division. Okay, addition or subtraction from left to right. So it's ever what's whatever you see first from uh, left to right. So if I see multiplication on the left and then division, in other words, if there's multiplication problem, then division, I'm going to do it this way because I see multiplication first from left to right. But if I see division before multiplication from left to right, I'll do it this way. And the same thing uh, for addition and subtraction. So it's whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so you need to have a, a thorough understanding of the order of operations to do this problem. And of course, you know, you need to have some basic uh, math skills in terms of uh, knowing how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and what a power is, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get into this now. What we wanna be doing is thinking about PEMDAS through the entire uh, problem. Now, of course, you're not going to write this down on your paper as you're doing this. Just want to keep this in mind and be like, okay, what's the first thing? First thing is parentheses. Is there parentheses? Of course, there is. We have parentheses right here. So that means we're going to go inside of the parentheses and we're going to do all this math inside of the parentheses right here. This whole uh, stuff right here. We're not going to stop now with that part, with that parentheses part of the PEMDAS until this is all simplified down to one um, value. Okay, so now looking inside the parentheses, I'm gonna I'm just kind of going through my checklist. I'm gonna say, okay, do I have any exponents, right? So that's what comes next. Yes, I do. Do I have powers, right? So yes, I do. That's two to the third power. So that's where we're gonna start. And two to the third power is eight. So just to be clear, two to the third power means take two and multiply it by itself three, oops, not three times. Yeah, I said three and I wrote three. See how easy it is to make a math mistake. I'm actually glad I did that. Okay, so uh, two to the third power is two times two times two. Uh, of course, we're multiplying two by itself three times. That's two to the third power and two times two times two, of course, is eight. All right, just for, uh, to be clear for some of you out there that might be confused about powers. Okay, so here we are. We took our first step, and you know I'm not gonna um, kind of highlight the parentheses. We just need to keep our focus within the parentheses and just keep cycling through that PEMDAS um, checklist, right? So P E M D A S. Well, we're in parentheses. We took care of our powers, our exponents. So now I'm, I'm asking myself, hey, is there any multiplication? Uh, or division. Yes, I actually have division and multiplication. So what do I see first from left to right? Well, it's pretty apparent. We see division. Okay, and this is a very, very, very common mistake. A lot of students are like, oh, look, uh, here's multiplication. I'm going to do that first. No, 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 no. We have to handle the division first. So we're going to handle that in just one second. Actually, let me go ahead and bring this up. We'll handle this right now. So we're going to go 8 divided by 8. Right? So that's what we got to focus on because we have division and multiplication. Uh, division uh, comes first from left to right. Very, very confused part, uh, very common area, let's just say, um, uh, for the order of operations. Okay? And I don't think this is stressed quite well enough in a lot of math textbooks and whatnot. That's why you have to really practice a wide variety of order of operation problems to get really strong at this stuff. And again, now, this is all, you know, basic math skills that everyone should know. All right, so let's go ahead and move forward here. So 8 divided by 8 is 1. Okay, so now we're kind of down to a nice, um, much more simplified uh, situation because here we're still working inside of our parentheses, but in terms of what to do next, hopefully that's pretty obvious. We have subtraction and multiplication and clearly multiplication is going to uh, become first. And remember, we can't really leave the parentheses until we're done with everything inside of the parentheses.
Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you. Well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. And this should hopefully uh, be pretty easy. Again, we want to do this without a calculator. And I'm doing this problem taking one step at a time, right? So we're down to 5 times parentheses 18 minus 1 times 2 and parentheses. So I'm just kind of focusing one step at a time. I'm running through that little PEMDAS checklist. I'm like, okay, multiplications next, certainly uh, before subtraction. So 1 times 2 is 2. So now I have 5 times parentheses this is this is multiplication right now i'm saying times but just to be clear a number outside of parentheses is in fact multiplication okay all right so we're going to take five and multiply it by this parentheses 18 minus 2 of course 18 minus 2 is 16 so now we're down to 5 times 16. all right so we're done with the parentheses we have parentheses here but we are down to one value so now I can take this 5 and multiply it by 16, and of course that is 80. Now you can see here I did this in a special way. You could just go, all right, 16 times 5 and do it in this manner, okay, which is perfectly fine, and you'll come up with uh, 80, right, because 5 times uh, 6 is 30. Uh, you have your 0 here, carry the 3, 5 times 1 is uh, 5, um, add 3, that's 80. That's awesome. Well, hopefully you have those basic math skills, but let me show you a cool little way to do this multiplication and something that, you know, is, um, you know, I think really good in terms of mental math, right? So let's say you're trying to figure out five times 60 and you just are um, five times 16 and you don't want to kind of do it this way, right? You're just like mentally trying to figure this out. A great way to do a little bit of mental math. Okay. And let's suppose you didn't have a piece of paper and pencil. But, um, you know, you're trying to get this answer. Uh, well, a great way to do multiplication is using the distributive property. This is a big, big deal in math. I'm not going to go into a full lecture here because I don't want to uh, kind of make this video any longer than I need to. But let me explain to you how, uh, what the distributive property is. So I'm taking this 5, I'm multiplying by 16. Now, I could just take 16 and break it up in any way I want. I could go 8 plus 8, you know, 20 uh, minus 4. You can make break up 16 in any kind of sum or difference that you want. Now, I'm going to break it up in a way where it I'm going to be using kind of really friendly numbers. So I'm going to think of 16 as 10 plus 6. Okay, so 10 plus 6 is 16. Now, why did I do that? Well, because mentally, I can um, easily figure out the uh, product here by using the distributive property. All right, so here's how the distributive property works. So what you're going to do is take this 5, and you're going to multiply it by 10. Okay, so we're going to be multiplying in or distributing that 5. So 5 times 10 is 50. Now, of course, mentally, you know, using mental math, all of us should be able to figure that out, right? Like, oh, yeah, 5 times 10 is 50. That's pretty easy. And then 5 times 6 is what? That's 30. Okay, so the distributive property, because I broke up 16, this is still 5 times 16, but mentally, I, uh, you know, in my mind's eye, if I didn't have a piece of paper or pencil, I could be like, all right, 5 times uh, 10 is 50, and then this 5 times this 6 would be 30, and then 5 plus 3 is 8, so 50 plus 30 is 80, okay? So the, uh, the distributive property is an absolute must-know, especially um, in higher-level mathematics like algebra. Okay, so hopefully you got an appreciation from this problem that basic math isn't necessarily so basic, right? I mean, you have to know the foundations to be successful in mathematics, and you need to respect the process of math, which is basically taking things one step at a time and focusing on kind of like the justifications for going to one step 
to the next step, okay? What I found through decades and decades of teaching that's uh, uh, this stuff is that people don't really know the basics as well as they think, right? So really kind of verify, go through, you know, especially if you're kind of getting back into mathematics, just to make sure your basic math skills are as strong as... I have a fantastic uh, little mini um, kind of math boot camp for basic math. It's called my Math Foundations course. You'll find a link to that in the description below. But I also have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that will, uh, kind of will help you out with this level of mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.